It's very low. Yes, and sometimes 0.5. No. And this gates on the oscillator. And, of course, then you can mix the frequencies that you want to mix in here, and it will change frequency by using this pump wave. Hmm. So we actually developed a machine, you know, that was uh, quite detailed, and it was a mix of uh, several different frequencies along with the pump wave. And uh, we actually laid this machine underneath the microscope, and you could see these things. <clears throat> you could see these little paramecium. They would just fly apart. They would just like go. Poop. I've seen that footage or, or similar footage. Yeah, they would. Yeah. In other words, these are single-cell organisms right. running all around, and uh, when the frequency is turned on, they just would uh, disintegrate. So, yeah, pop. And, and it was pretty easy to do that. Mm-hmm. When it, when it, you got into some of the B. coli and you got into some of the strep, mm-hmm. and we even uh, grew. Uh, Strecker used to. I had a partner that was that was in Africa a lot. And he used to bring these rhino horns back. And I said to Strecker one day, I said, uh, I said, let's just put this stuff in the water and let's see what grows out of this. Now, you really don't want to mess with that, Jeff, because there's a lot of things mm-hmm. that, that could grow. You follow me? Sure. And so we did. And we got some funny-looking things underneath the microscope, which Bob looked for hours and hours at these things. And uh, we were we were able to poof, and they were gone. Were they on the scale of paramecium? Same kind. Probably of, a little worse. Same kind of critters, though. Same yeah, size, worms basically. and things like that. You know, uh-huh. things that you could probably get by drinking the water there if it wasn't un, you know unfiltered. Yeah, I understand. We should also take just a moment or two and acknowledge uh, another one of your colleagues, Tom Bearden. Yeah. Uh, who I did not know was involved with his early research with uh, with Crane and the uh, the virus. Oh yeah, there's microscope. a whole um, yeah. There's a whole chapter dedicated to our work in AIDS biological warfare. One of his books, uh-huh. and it's called Experimental Work. The chapter is called Experimental Work. Tom, uh, for those of you who don't know, Tom Bearden again, one of the, the great truly great minds of our time, uh, a scientist, scientist, uh, a man who has gone where few have ever even thought to go before and has mm-hmm. uh, has been very brave about it, as have you, John Bedini. So I'm well, not I'm sure that we uh, acknowledge I, Tom. It, it, it's something that I have to do, Jeff. Yeah. You know, I just have to know. And uh, I don't let, I don't watch the news, first of all. Me neither. I, I don't watch <laughs> any of this, this garbage that's on TV. Mm-hmm. That's just mind control stuff. Yeah, and and I only got specific internet sites that I go to on, on things that I'm interested in, and so therefore the computer will stay off. So I'm not being bombarded 24 hours a day by uh, by all this this media flash, which I don't think anybody gets any value out of anyway. Nope. And. Uh, I more or less go go into my deep realms of uh, conscious thought, you know, with my circuits and things like that, because I get more pleasure out of that. And uh, so, uh, by the way, we worked, Strecker and I worked day in and day out, Saturdays and Sundays, probably for a good half a year, Jeff, on this, along with Tom Bearden. Tom Bearden was there, you know, a couple of times, a couple of visits, uh, watching things underneath the microscope and actually, you know, hooking himself up to machines to feel what the pulse was Mm. and what this felt like and what that felt like. And, of course, Tom, you know, had great intuition in being able to tell you if the thing was harmful or not. And uh, this was one of the, uh, the things that was very important in our research work because it led us you know, to more, to uh, to a better uh, technical standpoint as far as the circuits went. Because it wasn't a square wave and it wasn't a sine wave that was, that was having, you know, making this thing happen. And so uh, 
I'll get into a little bit about that machine in a minute and, and how that machine operated because I think the audience needs to know that. Very good. Okay. And the site that John Bedini has put together, excellent. And then, of course, the best Rife site is rife.org. Loaded with information. Very important that you study up on this and understand what is being kept from all of us and how unnecessary most death, disease, and suffering is. Be right back. Right back with you and talking with John Bedini. All right, John, uh, go ahead with the stories. Uh, okay, so fascinating. So um, basically, uh, Jeff, what this machine was was what we call a pump wave mixer. In other words, where we could say take four or five different frequencies, say fifty hertz, say you know five hundred hertz, say a thousand hertz. Audio frequencies like like Hoyland and Rife claim they were using, all right. And we would gate all these frequencies with a gate, in other words, with something that turned them on and off in the DC. We actually enfolded these waveforms into a DC potential. So that tells you right away that the machine was battery driven. You follow me? It was not plugged hmm. into the wall. Hmm. Okay. And what we wanted to do... So it's running, and that was because it's DC, it wasn't, just for you folks out there, it clearly was not plugged into the wall. Mm -hmm. Coming off a battery. Correct. And what we wanted to do, Jeff, was we wanted to enfold this mix of frequencies into the DC potential. All right? And the, the DC, which is direct current, all right, was at a potential, say, a couple hundred milliamps at the max. Something that would not, you know, roll your eyes around if you touch the paddle. But what we wanted to see is if we could put the frequency into you and then measure it with a scope. And we were totally successful in doing this. And it, the cells in your body actually break this DC potential then apart. And the cells, the electrical impulses from the cell mimic exactly the frequency on the scope. And so we knew then that that this is what was killing these paramecium in there. Okay. See, because there wasn't there wasn't enough current to even stun them. Hmm. Like it was in microamps, mm -hmm. like two microamps or something. Now some of you are saying, well paramecium is huge compared to a yeah. bacteria and a virus, and that's true, but uh, the, 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 follow but, along here. But but what we were thinking, this is what we were thinking, we were thinking that if we could enfold this, these particular frequencies into some potential and then have the body cells translated, mm -hmm. we could open up these frequencies with something like a big bang, mm -hmm. you follow me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to like rupture the virus or the bacteria, that's right, so what we were thinking. A surge. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so this took a lot of a lot of engineering time to get to get the frequencies to infold on the DC line and we developed a special set of circuits that did this that actually we called a a modulator, a DC modulator where we could modulate the DC and and have it come out straight so that it was undetectable. All right? Then when we applied this to you, you would see the sine waves and everything show up on the skin. And anywhere you touched, hmm. you would see this show up. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was successful because... 